All right, guys, welcome to Chibi No Podcast, and today we are reviewing season three of Stranger Things. So you have me, David the Smash fan. Smash Tech guy. And this is going to be full of spoilers of the show, so if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Uh, go binge it, because I think it's like one of the highest shows that have been binged. It's like somewhere like 40 million or something like that, that last report wow. I saw. It's something like that. It's crazy. And of those 40 million, like 12 million have finished it so far. So crazy numbers, but let's uh, let's kind of go into this. So let's talk just first of our overall impressions of the season. So I kind of want to preface this by saying uh, I, I think it's a, a, a big step of season two. Uh, in the sense that season two just I liked the ideas I liked the stuff that they had in it but it slowed down a lot when it came to Eleven and her search for the other people that have powers and it just slowed down too much for me for us to finally get back on track to the main story and so this one didn't feel that way at all and I think it also has to deal with the number of episodes they had as well I feel the exact same way. Season two kind of dragged a lot for me. Like you, even like what you're saying, and some of the hype moments that you needed, it would just slow back down and get almost like fillerish a lot of times. Where I <laughs> felt this season, I was kind of bored at first. Like the first few episodes, I was like, "Hey, let's move on out of this relationship stuff." But then, like I think around episode three, it just like climbed all the way to a finale. Did you get that too? Like, it didn't really slow down after, like, the first couple of episodes. Like, they got you that character dynamic to kind of give you where the characters are after the few years. And then it just, like, the story just escalated crazy. Never stopped. Yeah. And it just kept going and going. I think uh, this season was also structured very differently in that the the main cast was split into, like, four... Is it three? Three or four different little four, teams. Yeah. yeah so... And you had, I mean, you also had all these little subplots going in there, but all of them were all separated and all doing their own thing, and they all kind of combined together at the end. I call it the Avengers type of I thing. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it reminded me of, the Avengers or the Defenders from Netflix. They just kind of did their own thing, and they kind of merged together at the end finale to, to work things out. Yeah, the Strangers. You got the Avengers, the... Revengers and the Strangers. <laughs> Dude, actually, like, when they all grouped together for the last couple episodes at the end, I, I actually, that's one thing I was calling out. I was like, this is so cool. The whole team is together. And I'm thinking, like, when's the last time we had all of them together? But not necessarily all together. This was, like, all together to, like, stop the evil. It was just really fun, dude. Like, to see all the different, like, uh, it was good writing to me, right? Like, they all, like you said, they all had different, um, different roles. But, like, it perfectly blended in together. It was, like, you know, they found the knowledge about the Russians. And then you find out, like, like Dustin and, like, his uh, Mormon girlfriend and the, the radio signals. And just, um, like, you know, you find the hidden basement with Steve and all them. And just, it was really cool that everything came together. The Russian thing, at first I was like, what the <laughs> heck are they doing with the Russians? Right. What the heck? But I was thinking Cold like War, helps. thinking, yeah. <laughs> oh, talking about Robin? When Robin was helping, like, and she's trying to translate. Oh, gosh, it was so fun. Yeah, so it was it was good. And they they, they had the same, I mean, the protagonist, I mean, the antagonist was the Mind Flare. Um, but the way that they incorporated now was a lot different and it showed different powers that it has now, um, or that I guess is shown now. And one of them is like basically mind controlling and using different animals as substance to make a tangible creature in, in the real world. Because we saw that with, with the rats, these rats are just like eating all these chemicals and exploding. And basically every time they explode, they would be like this goopy thing and they would form together to create this monster um which ultimately infects billy who becomes kind of the the face of the antagonist which i thought was actually really cool because i mm -hmm. i didn't like billy that much same um and i and i liked how they made him like complete antagonist here i mean granted it's not like him him it's the mind flare but that that was really i thought that was a great uh great pick as for the villain of the season I think he hit on a good spot there because with Billy, I didn't like him in season two. I mean, but the thing is, I do like the actor a lot, right? But yeah. um, and he killed it this season. I felt like for his role and for somebody I didn't care about last season, it really made me care about him a lot this season. I felt really bad for him. And then another dynamic to that is his sister Max. I really hated her in season two, where in this season I actually liked her, and I felt bad with the two of them 
and uh, especially the part when like Billy dies and sacrifices himself at the end and like you see Max screaming like I just felt that dynamic between them I felt really bad for their family and uh, I actually thought he was like you said a good antagonist I thought the whole story blended very well with him and I thought he killed the role I thought his acting was superb in this yeah I, I actually would disagree with you I hated Max I do not like her in this season I thought she gotcha. was more the reason why is because I mean it's it's with every like any story that has to deal with teenagers that are growing up there always has to be that girl who like always looks at things negatively oh, and yeah, yeah, so yeah. like she's always like putting she's always telling Eleven like oh he's doing this or who cares about this like all this other crap like putting down Mike and which ultimately ends up to them breaking up um, you know, with all these other ideas that they gave Eleven. Like I said, it, I think it was good in the sense that she she, uh, she didn't have to play everything safe. She didn't have, always have to listen to Mike or to Hopper about what she can and can't do. She's, she should make her own choices um, and, you know, reap the consequences of whatever they may be. So I liked it in that sense. But like, like I said, she's always, she was always that annoying girl that like, oh, everything's bad. Like, oh, he's always just lying or he's always just this, 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 this. And so... That's why I didn't like her too much because that was her role, at least at least in her dynamic with Eleven. Um, yeah, let me agree with that you on me, that yeah. too. I, I, I guess what I should have said is I, I didn't like her in the first part where it's more drama. I liked her more during the end. Sorry, I should have said that more. No, you're fine. But it, it was funny like to see them go through their puberty, like because and it was interesting because I, I think one of the things that um, that didn't happen, which I'm glad happened, is that Will didn't become anything bad or had anything with the upside down like they actually gave him screen time like with everyone else but it, mm-hmm. it was sad because i guess like with all the stuff that's been happening to him he has this um what's it called i, I don't know if he's me- mentally has a um, sense no not a spider sense i don't think i don't think Peter mentally Dingle? he's like progressed he's progressed like <laughs> the other kids because the other kids have interest in girls and all this stuff and he doesn't yeah. they might be alluding to him possibly being gay maybe I was seeing, feeling that exact thing and i hope they don't do that whole like don't just throw it in there for a political statement you know what i mean right make, so make I, I don't I, I don't know if that's what they're doing they might but like he's more focused on wanting to be like how they were before and so it's interesting because there's because i think in in life there's that's what happens like you have friends that mature faster than others and sometimes you want to be the one playing in the basement all night long and but your other friends want to go make out with their girlfriends <laughs> so it's Which just there's a meme they, they feel, still felt they're kind of young didn't you feel like it was kind of weird still it's like they're like 13 and everyone's making out it's just like dude like i, I don't know that at 13 <laughs> i know I, I wasn't until like maybe 15 16 when i was experimenting and even then it's kind of like come on man you know but, but 12 13 but the, the raging it's that raging hormones they they can't stop <laughs> i think they're in, i think they're in ninth grade maybe can maybe I they're just, 14 can i just say that mike needs to really do something about his damn hair no, he, he's a living embodiment of the 80s. <laughs> yeah, but that hair needs to go, man. <laughs> um, but, okay, so let's kind of go... Let, let's kind of give our overall impressions, and then we'll go into a little bit more details of what we liked. So overall, I, I really liked it. I think having the episode... Having only... Uh, is it six episodes or eight? Eight. Um, eight Oops. episodes. I think it really did well for it because it just didn't seem like it slowed down. It just seemed like... It just, it just, every scene was important. Like it didn't, I didn't feel like there was a lot of wasted time and that's what I really liked. So I was fully engaged in every episode. So I personally liked that. And so I give it a solid nine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably give it a, maybe an 8.7, 8.8. Pretty close. Okay. Um, you know, one thing I, and this is something, <laughs> cause I know your, your favorite character I believe was, um, was it Dustin this, this arc? Oh, I love Dustin. Yeah. So Dustin actually became my second favorite character, close second, but my boy Steve's always been my favorite. And I was thinking to myself, I really hope he gets his face beaten up this season again, because that's what he's known for. And he got his face beaten up. I was so happy. I was cheering when his face was messed up. By those dang Russians. <laughs> those dang Russians. Speaking of that, how'd you like the Russians being the enemies? Um, I felt like it's very 80s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it was Cold War happening and all that stuff. So it, uh, maybe it was after the Cold War. But either way, it made, it, it didn't it feel fit, right? out of place. Yeah, I think the only thing that they didn't, uh, maybe I didn't, I didn't pay attention, that they didn't fully uh, explain was why they're trying to get to the Upside Down. The only thing I could think of was they're trying to militarize or try and get the demogorgons and 
get them under their control, which again we'll talk about near the the ending of, of why I think that. But that's again it wasn't fully explained, but I'm thinking that's what they're trying to do. But it just again it wasn't like their main focus. It's just like the Russians are trying to up open it up. But but why? It's like uh uh-huh. But that was my that's yeah, how I thought I don't know if they on that, did they? Yeah. So that was my only gripe about the the Russians it's just it was like they're there because of the Russians. Um but again, I think the the ending, the uh, the post credit scene, which never happens in Stranger Things, but their post credit scene, um, I think explains what they what they were trying to do. But again, it's it's not clear. But that's what I'm thinking. No, that's a good idea. Actually, that's one thing I keep thinking. As not just Russians, but the negative I have on the plot of this whole thing was just what are the Russians trying to achieve? Like you know, they're trying to open a portal, but they never really state what the interest or point is of it right and that's one thing i was kind of thinking like why are we doing this what is the point of stopping this you know i never really got that answered that is to probably the real reason why knockoff it can't be a perfect 10 or anywhere near like the high nines because of that particular thing but the rest of my score just comes from the great pacing and character arcs and just how everything came together and blended it was just very well done yeah it was so let's let's go over a few things a key uh I'll, I'll go over like I guess two. Uh, I have tons of scenes that I really liked, sure. but I'll I'll go over I'll go over two that I really want to mention really quickly. So the first one um, has it. I know we were talking about you know there's a lot of shows that get political, um, but this Especially part I didn't. Days. But this part I didn't feel like it was. I felt like it felt really natural. And it, it's the whole part where Steve's talking to Robin after they've been drugged and they're in the bathroom, mm. and she kind of she comes out as being lesbian. Um, but what was interesting is like again they never made it a focus um, about the show and about her specifically, but it um, and they and uh, Steve what they did with him is like if you remember the first in the first season like he I think he called like um, Jonathan like queer or something like that he was like very like he's kind of a douche in the first yeah. season yeah, yeah. and they've just changed him so much to season three and season three like I, when he finds out that the girl he likes is lesbian he's like oh it's like. Well, the the girl you're crushing on, she starts at singing, and they just kind of just <laughs> start. You know they just start playing it off, and I thought that was really good. I thought it was really natural, like to have, you know, that they want to have that um, representation of you know of lesbian and stuff. And I thought with Robin, they did it very well because they didn't like push it so much. They just said, "This is what I am," um, and they just kind of kept going on as friends. Like, oh, that's cool, whatever. You know, on top of that, that scene, I and yeah, I was fine with it, but at the same time, I didn't like it. Not because of political anything. I have no problem with that. I, I actually like the connection development between all season with them that I was kind of hoping that would happen, you know? So it's kind of like, oh man, that's a letdown. That's a bummer. And I was really rooting for him. But then at the same time I looked at it, it's like, well, there's life. So, you know, that's life. They made it more realistic. And on top of the realistic part, the one thing I like about these kids is they're not all these glamorous looking kids. You know, they're, they're and I don't mean this mean or disrespectful, but a lot of the characters in the show, these kids, they're very basic or average looking they actually look like the real people on the streets right they're not these like kate becking sills or emma watson's everywhere or something you know these are look like natural kids and that's one of my favorite parts is that it makes it almost feel like these are real high school kids or middle school kids these are these are the kids you would see in school and here they are in this show you know and and that dynamic they added with that lesbian part that is something that's like life doesn't always go the way you expect it and these characters seem very real does that make any sense what i'm saying yeah it does so and I like that. Uh, yeah, and I'm glad that they're they're doing it. They're, they're approaching all these different um, subjects in just a great way. Um, and the second scene I wanted to talk about really quickly was <laughs> the the finale has has got to be my favorite episode. Um, it's an hour and seventeen minutes long, but the reason I love it is just because in the middle of the freaking episode, when all hell's breaking loose. They're being attacked by the mind flare. Um, they need to get the coordinates for that constant, or whatever, and so. Susie finally picks up and does <laughs> you're gonna bring this and, up. and they and she won't give him the constant until he starts singing with her and it's the freaking never ending story song from Lim Hall and I <laughs> could not stop bust up laughing turn around look at what you see turn around look at what you see in her face the mirror of your dream. Make believe I'm everywhere. Give it in the light. Written on the pages is 
Because it was funny because as they're singing this entire song, you see like they cut to the chase with like where they where they're being chased by the by the mind play and you see you see Steve and Robin in the back just kinda of looking odd, looking around, hearing these two kids sing, and you see the background the monster chasing them. You see Hopper and uh, and uh, for Winona's writer's character Joyce, and she's like put her head like against the wall, like oh. And the kids uh, and the <laughs> Hopper's like, what the heck is going on here? And it was the best scene ever. And on top of that, the ending later after all the aftermath, right? And you see yeah. like Lucas singing the song with Max making fun of him, <laughs> and he's just sitting there waving the middle finger at them. Oh my god! It just goes to show how great all these characters are, and how we've just been able to grow attached to how they how they act. Oh my. My god dude it, that was so funny that scene and actually his girlfriend was awesome because they're always making fun of him all season saying she's fake and i keep thinking like nah no nah, my, bo- my boy dustin ain't messing around he, he met this girl and then you see her and she's super dope <laughs> my my <laughs> best thing is like when when they talk about her in the first episode they're like, oh she's mormon it's like what does that mean and, they, and some of them are like oh they don't use electricity he's like max like that's the amish idiot he's like no they just it's just a religion with all these super white people i'm like we're not all white. <laughs> um, if I can add my two favorite scenes real quick, since yeah, those ahead. are two of my favorite, but since you already brought them up, I can't bring them up. I really like the scene when, um, what was it, Robin and um, Steve were going to get the, they wanted to get that job or whatever at that fast food place. And oh, at the asking, movie theater? Yeah, the movie theater. Sorry. And or the movie at, rental, whatever. Yeah. Movie yeah. Rental, yeah. And he wants to ask him. He has to do a test of their favorite movies. And so, like, he asks Steve, what's your favorite movie? And he's just like, uh, Star Wars. And he's like, A New Hope. He's like, a what? He's like, <laughs> which one? He's like, uh, the one with the teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, one. he's like, what? And then he's like, okay, you got another one. He's like, uh, yeah, that that movie where they go uh, back to the future and stuff. And like, he doesn't even know the damn name because that scene was great when they had the freaking Back to the Future scene. That was hilarious just for the pop culture reference because they're like my two favorite like films of all time. Did and you then, notice that the? Yeah. Well, did you notice that the 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 car book cut it was Phoebe Cates? So like, you know how Dustin was like, oh, that's Phoebe Cates. Like he's. We, Talked about his girlfriend. Dutch is like, oh, she's like Phoebe Cates, but hotter. It was funny because Phoebe Cates, the cutout was the, oh, the thing that gosh. that Steve. Yeah, I didn't notice that. That's a good notice, dude. <laughs> it was funny. And then the other scene I just want, and this gives props to to Elle because she did some amazing fight stuff when she was fighting Billy in the locker room, and like she just one arm lifted up like the weight set and just threw it at him. Like, yeah. oh my god, dude! I was just like, damn, she's a damn Jedi. Like, that was so cool. And then, like, Billy's choking her and thinks she's going to fail, but then eventually she's able to, like, throw him off and stuff. I think how she's able to control her powers in this was some of the scenes when she's doing the power, especially when she, like, uh, what's it What's it called? The the flare? Or what's, it, what's the monster called? Mind flare. Mind flare. When she, like, rips the head apart, dude, inside of the house. Oh, my gosh. It's like, it was, she had some badass moments in this, dude. So yeah. that was my other favorite was just her fighting stuff. So let, let's quickly talk about the, the ending here. Um, so the ending, it, it ends with uh, Billy dying, then finally be able to close up the the portal to the Upside Down, but at the cost of Joyce um, turning off the machine, which explodes and supposedly supposed to electrocute everything. And Hopper was in that area. And when she goes to see him or tries to see if she's there, he's there, but he's not there. He's gone. And so the assumption is that he's dead. And then, so the ending ends with uh, Will, Jonathan, his family moving, and Eleven being with that family and moving on to somewhere else. And so it kind of leaves like everything kind of in limbo now because now, like, the main, like, they're not all together anymore. They had to move. Hopper is presumably dead. And that's that's basically how it ends wait i want to uh, add but... one other detail if that's okay one sure. of the other important details too during the ending that i saw was very interesting was l finding out that in her leg when she got harmed that the creature was inside of her leg and she had to pull it out and ever since she pulled it out she lost her powers which i think was something that it was trying to do because it know it, it knows it that she defeated it last time in season two that i think it was trying to take away her powers so i don't know what's going to happen i think that'll be a big part of season four but we also see at the very end scenes too that she's it was like a, what three months later and she still can't move anything and like references that it'll come back 
but we don't know what's going to happen with that. I thought that was interesting too, on top of the Hobbit. Yeah, thing. yeah, we don't know what's going to happen with with her. I think her powers might come back. Um, I wonder how they're going to get into the upside down now, unless the Russians try and build another type of um, machine to break through. But to to elaborate on the ending, the post credit scene, they it it takes place in Russia, and Here's where we, where the people are saying that Hopper's alive is because the Russians are going to go take some prisoner out of their cell. And when they're trying to open the first door, the guy says, no, not the American. And they go to the next one. They take out some other random dude, put him in a cage. And you see the, the demi dog who looks like a full fledged demi gorgon now eating eats the guy. And that's how it ends. Yeah. So the assumption here is that the the American is hopper yeah and i'm kind of wondering that too and you know it's interesting too when the end credits scene is starting and it shows the snow before it shows the snow it almost looks like the dust ash from the upside down and then it transverses into snow is what i noticed and other people are kind of mentioning too. it's it's the same thing they did with season one with 11 because when 11 destroyed the demigorgon yeah um it kind of had that similar effect interesting so i think they might be hitting in that too because you also kind of see hopper before the explosion they you see um you see joyce look down right before the explosion goes up and then they show the split scene of hopper looking to the right and then they cut to like darkness right and the next scene when she looks back up he's gone right and there's no how do you say it like from here exploding because i can't remember didn't the russians when they when they exploded and died from the blast didn't you see like uh dust or something from them or ashes when they exploded but like hopper yeah something that. like that so like it, it it makes me wonder if he's or he got if he jumped through the portal because he did he looked at it before he he, he did that because he's been through the upside down in season one or he jumped down below the balcony maybe some people maybe the russians grabbed him and took him away right at that scene because we didn't see like there had to be they almost imply there's like a few seconds or even like 20 seconds maybe of something happening during that scene that we don't know so he could have went through the upside down or the rusher captured him that's the only two things i can think because i think he's too viable of a character for them to kill off like he has to be coming back there's no way he's not right i mean did you feel that way yeah i think the 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 biggest theory is that he that he got either pulled into the upside down or jumped into the upside down and that the Russians found him in there and then captured him. Then um, the only th- the only thing I have an issue with it is be- is that they I think the mind flayer would have used that time to get out as soon as possible if they had opened it up um, because it, and the reason I think that they didn't go through the they possibly didn't go through the um, what's it called the uh, upside down is. Well, it's, it's it's basically that because it it, it implies that the Russians have to have gone some have gone in in and got back out, which we don't we know that the there are certain um, portals that are open right because like that's how Will and um, the other kids got through because there was like a so I can't remember or whatever, right yeah so there are ways to get into it um, I think and maybe that's why Hopper went in there but some I think the Russians found a different way they didn't have to open up the the portal. Uh, what I want to find out is about the is about the demidog because they were all connected to the mind flare, right? I mean, I would think so because of the, I think they imply that just because the season three is all like the host controlling, right? So I'm wondering how this demidog or this demigorgon is alive um, because I know there's a demigorgon to be in the first episode. I mean, the first season, um, kind of doing its own things. Um, what if it's part of the thing that was in Elle's leg? That could be it, but didn't it go back into the the Mind Flayer's monster thing? I, all I remember is when she got it rid of it, she um, pulled it out of her leg and then threw it, and you see it like hit like the wall or car or something like that. That's all I remember, though. But I thought it would it would die as well because once the portal was closed, mm-hmm. the entire monster just died. So I don't know yeah, if this is like it's point. separate. I don't know if it's a separate thing or if they. If the portal is somewhere open, but the mind flare is just biding its time and letting the Russians use the demi dog, or maybe seeing that's their best way to kind of create chaos, and then for him to come through and finish off everyone else, whatever he wants, he or she or it wants to do. So, uh, the, too many. This, I guess there's too many possibilities of what it could be, and we need more answers. We just, I just know that there's going to be a season four for sure, um, uh, because of the way that they that they left it off. 
So yeah, good points. But yeah, I think I think that's. I mean, I, I think we could talk forever about what what happened in the show because there are tons of good parts. They had Lucas's sister in there, which was awesome. They had tons of Terminator references in it, which was <laughs> amazing. That one Russian reminded me of Arnold. Did you feel that way too? Yeah, that one, or when the, <laughs> or when um when uh, Nancy and Jonathan are running in the hospital from the mind flare from the guys at the at the uh, press office or the press place, like the way he just walking normally, just kind of reminds me of the Terminator when all of them were running at the and the TX that whatever the TX one thousand is just kind of just walking normally to them. <laughs> like, just, I felt it that was awesome. Too. I miss. I hated that the Russian guy died too. Uh, Smirnoff. Oh, he was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he, was he was awesome. awesome. I love that they called him Smirnoff, dude. I was laughing so hard at that. I felt bad I love, for him. I love how they called Murray Bald Eagle. That was awesome. Oh my gosh, yes, and he didn't want to respond to it at first. Oh, it was so yep. cool. It's just a really fun season, man. I had a lot of fun this season. Yep, go watch it. It's again, it's it's only eight episodes, but they go by quick. And it's a, there's a reason why people are binging it nonstop because it is just and you just keep wanting more and more. So, mm-hmm. yeah, let us know what you guys thought about the about the season. If you liked it, if you disliked it, tell us what your favorite uh, what your favorite uh, part was. And follow us on Facebook, we're Chibino Podcast. On Twitter, at Chibino Podcast, capital C, capital N, capital P. So yeah, and our YouTube channel, Chibino Podcast. So signing off. This is David the Smash Fan. Magic Tech Guy. And this is Chibino Podcast.